Whether you have a skin interest, a skin query, a skin trauma, or skin disease, I warmly welcome you to Heal Thy Skin, a podcast brought to you by Derm Health Co. I'm Marnie, dermal clinician, dermoscopist, and your podcast host. Skin is deeper than beauty, and our mission is to build the largest platform of specialized practitioners focused on skin health and skin empowerment. Join me each week where we go deep into the skin and beyond to hear stories and education from leading practitioners on a journey of skin health. This episode is proudly brought to you by Venus Concept Australia. Venus is a medical technology company and the creator of Venus Fever, which is a highly customizable skin resurfacing device that delivers exceptional results with low downtime. It's powered by nanofractional radio frequency and it has what's called smart scan technology. You see, it's a fractional radio frequency system that allows the operator control of ablation coagulation and resurfacing for enhanced efficacy in resolving mild to severe skin damage. Venus can replace all other skin resurfacing devices with one lightweight tabletop device and the great thing is is that these treatments are safe for all skin types and it has low downtime. So if you are a practitioner and you're looking to include one of these types of treatments as a service offering, you can actually book a consultation or a demo by completing the form. The link is in the show notes here and just click submit. Then a representative will contact you and they'll provide you everything you need. If you're on the other side and you're looking to have a venous fever treatment, then just jump onto their website, link in the bio, and they have a list of all the clinics with the procedures as well so you'll be able to find someone close to you welcome to the heal thy skin podcast i'm marnie your host and today i'm traveling virtually to the other side of the world to speak with carolyn sprott Carolyn is Germany's first lipedema fashion blogger and one of the hosts of a podcast called Der Lipidem. Ten years ago, after leaving from work experiencing excruciating pain, she was diagnosed with lipedema. And the diagnosis ultimately made her a stronger person, but her journey towards acceptance was not always easy. We talk a lot about that in this episode. Now she speaks at lymphatic events, she models for compression campaigns and clothing, and is continuously raising awareness for the lipedema community. This episode or this interview was one of Carolyn's first English interviews ever and it was so brilliant she did so incredibly well and she has a fantastic sense of humor so I know that you're going to enjoy this conversation a lot um the first question that I asked Carolyn was what she thought was the biggest misconception about lipedema lipedema pain cannot be seen it's painful and cannot be seen only felt and I think that many sufferers have to constantly struggle to be taken seriously in their suffering because the pain does not depend on the appearance. You can have small legs and have just as much pain as one with wider legs. And, but I think you can't expect from everyone to automatically differentiate between normal and diseased fat. So there's this thing that not everyone with wider legs has lipedema and such, right? It's really complicated for people around them to, to understand what they are going through. And well, it's an insidious disease. It has not been researched enough and its manifestations are just as diverse as the bodies of those affected, like millions of types, different shapes and such. And misunderstandings do not only exist from outside, but also within the patient population. And one does not often agree on all the dimensions of the disease and the latest findings and not even the doctors agree. It just makes things more complicated and both for the patient and for the people around them. Mm, it certainly does. And I'd love for you to just share what lipedema is, because in Australia, especially, it's not even really considered in our medical arena as a yeah, disease, I heard it a lot. where I know it is over there, isn't it? Yes, we are very lucky in Germany, 
because we are, yeah, one of the few countries in the world that treat illness well. Well, in, in short, lipedema is a chronic, painful fat swelling disorder, and it can only be treated conservatively and surgically. Well, currently, it can only be treated like that, but not be cured. You can do some liposuctions, the surgery you're doing, and you are not guaranteed free from symptoms after that. That's the problem. So you mostly have to continue with the conservatively therapy. And the thing is that it always occurs symmetrically on legs and arms. And this disease occurs, why this disease occurs has not yet been fully explained. And it's certain that there is a genetic predisposition and it gets worse with puberty, with pregnancy, with menopause. So there must be a connection with hormonal changes. And it usually only affects women. And it is estimated that it's like around 3 million women that are affected in Germany alone. So there must be millions of women worldwide being affected and suffering from it. And often go misdiagnosed. Yes. Doctors say they are just fed or they do some sport or some dieting. And sports and dieting does not cure anything on that. It makes things better. And if you are doing it very extremely, like bodybuilding, you can change yeah, the strongness of this illness. It can be getting really better, but you have to be extreme on it. And one does not often do this. Of course, especially because it's uncomfortable. Yes, right. It's really hard. It's hard. So you've talked about pain. What are some other mm -hmm. common symptoms associated with lipedema? Well, you have to distinguish visual from felt symptoms. Not only you can infer that you have a lipedema from the visual, but there are certain characteristics. Optical symptoms would be, for example, a disproportion between the upper and the lower body, relatively slim on the top, but arms and legs are much wider and they appear wider and it doesn't fit together. But it's more important, however, that the pain can only be felt and you can feel the pain never as a... Well, you can't see the pain, right? And you can feel this pain even with a light touch. Everyone feeling it feels it differently. It can be stinging pain. It can be strange pain. You can't really name it. You can't really show where it occurs. You are much more sensitive to pain at all in the affected areas. And there are also differences between the affected area and the not, not affected area. Really, you can squish your tissue on both spots. And there is a difference in the feeling and you develop bruises even after light bumps. And often you don't know where they come from. The extremities can feel heavy. And if the arms are affected, even light loads such as blow drying hair can be difficult. And sometimes the feeling arises that the legs or arms do not belong to the body. And that's really strange sometimes. Sadly, one can say the heavier the expression, the more knotted the fat tissue and the physical limitations increase. So that disconnection almost not feeling like you're within your body that would be really yeah. challenging so how is one diagnosed this might differ depending on where you are in the world but how is one diagnosed there in Germany well yeah we are lucky because some doctors know this disease but most of them really yeah many patients have a long journey until they are diagnosed um, they um, doctors are not still not familiar with the clinical picture and the patients often feel helpless searching for an answer to their pain and to their suffering because it's often the, the case that the legs are wider and so wide or disformed that they suffer from the optical view from the view of it well if a doctor knows what he's doing <laughs> He can determine with an ultrasound at the fat tissue if whether the fat cells are abnormal or how the subcutaneous fat is like. And most often, however, the diagnosis is made after speaking to the patient and after a physical examination. Mostly the symptoms are usually the, the decisive factor. So tell us about your story. Yeah, long, long time ago. In lipedema years, it's, it's like at the beginning of the world, uh, 10 years ago. Yeah, in the last five years, everything changed, I, I guess. And it's, yeah, more, more awareness is going on. And I don't know how it's in Australia, but in Germany, yeah, the people rise 
Well, 10 years ago, after a long day at work, I had excruciating pain in both my calves. I was riding in a train and I really didn't knew where this would come from. And I didn't knew this pain. It was new to me because your, your calves don't, don't sting or something just like that. And I was pretty lucky because I was diagnosed shortly afterwards. This was pure luck. Normally that doesn't happen. And I was given the correct flat knit compression at once. So super unusual. And to improve my condition, I began to lose weight and I exercise and I didn't prevent the lipedema spraying into my arms. That was really hard because that pulled me into a terrible frustration. You're doing all this work. You are working really hard every day against this monster in you. You feel like you're fighting against something and it spreads. Yeah, it almost ended me up in a depression, I think. But at that moment, I felt if I wouldn't raise at that moment, before the depression comes, I would have to use more force to get out of a depression than out of a frustration. So I began therapy and began to get another perspective on me. That's what you have to do when you are just sticking in your own head and you're circling around yourself. One thing my therapist told me that is still clinging in my head is I'm not the center of the world. People don't care how I look. They don't care how I looked at last Christmas. They don't care how I look next Christmas. They just see me in that second and I'm not the center of the world. There's everything going around me. And if I have a bad hair day, they don't know. They didn't see me yesterday. So that really released everything that made me free. And I think of it till today after five years. Yeah, it helped me to free myself from some stigmas. And after the doctor's second diagnosis of my arms, I went to rehab and had compression stockings on my arms. And that was a game changer for me because now it was seen. The compression was seen. Before this, I used only tights and tights are tights. They are there and people know them. It's just very thick. And this compression on the arms is just another, just another thing. And I was, well, yeah, confused how I should handle it when I get asked about it and was unsure. And well, the pain didn't get any better and it was so severe that I decided to do liposuctions. And this is currently the only operable way to treat the symptoms. And I hoped to be symptom free afterwards. Well, spoiler, I wasn't. <laughs> After I think it was six to nine months, the stinging came back little by little. And that was really, yeah, at that moment, you have to decide to not let yourself get down. And yeah, well, the light stitches and the fat tissue started again and the therapy started all over again and the frustration started all over again. And the only difference that was that I had to come up with a therapy myself in order to not lose my mind after this. And yeah, well, that was my one shot. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I really want to do liposuctions again because I'm afraid of damaging my lymph ducts and it was really painful and, and not a nice, it's like you heal for three to four weeks. It's really, it's not nice when everything is running down. Well, you, you, you get injections uh, while the procedure and during the procedure and well, this, this liquid flows out of your veins for like a half, a week, a week and a half. And that's really not a nice thing to feel well I don't want to do it again if I have to so after the liposuctions I already feel like a Swiss cheese <laughs> it was three uh, surgeries so my tissue under the the skin must be like a Swiss cheese I always think of that and I began to I had to had the feeling I have to improvise and find something that made me a good day something that took five minutes a day to make this day good and I began to dress every day to match my compression and think of outfits and looks and they should make the compression a part of the look and make them feel good and stylish. And this easy handling with something that others reject so much was so good to see for other women. And that started a real movement. I was the first on Instagram going with a fashion compression therapy. And yeah, my condition has not improved since then, but it also did not deteriorate it. So except for my mind, which has grown immensely with all the challenges since then, my body, well, 
just hangs around and goes with it. Yeah, what a story. And I do want to talk more about your story, but you Mm -hmm. mentioned when you had the procedure that you were nervous about your lymphatic system. How is lipedema different from lymphedema? Because they often get mistaken from each other. And sometimes you can have both. Right. It's pretty, there there are a few cases where lymphedema is there from the start. There are many, many cases where it's really difficult to diagnose which was first. But well, it's a lot actually that difficult to differ for both illnesses. Lymphedema is a swelling that is either congenital or may result from cancer surgeries or accidents. And above all, it causes not only body parts to swell, but also the back of the feet, back of the hands to swell. And they are always slender with lipedema. And if you press into the lipedema tissue at a finger, the bump persists for a while. And the different, uh, well, you can push it with a finger against your leg. And if there stays a bump, you can say that there is a lymphatic problem. And if you press into, and the differential diagnosis is then clear using a stemos sign. You take the skin of your second or third toe between two fingers and lift it up. If it's difficult to lift and does not show any wrinkles, you usually have lymphedema. The skin of a person with lipedema would be soft and thin and easy to lift up. And that's the most sure diagnosis as well. When you, you, you can do it at your finger, it depends on where your lymphedema could be. You can have it in your face. That's pretty harsh uh, because then you have to, uh, to wear compression in your face, like a mask. You can rub some banks up, but I wouldn't <laughs> prefer that. Or just take me with you <laughs> at least. But the most people have it on, well, women have it on one arm sometimes after breast surgery, uh, breast cancer surgery. And also, you, yeah, you can have it right after birth. Thank you for clarifying because we have covered lymphedema on the podcast and even mm-hmm. lipedema with a plastic surgeon. But I think it's important to differentiate between them because they Absolutely. can appear similar to the untrained eye. Yeah, it can occur together when it's really like a fast state of the disease. When there are three states of lipedema and state one is pretty early and uh, state three is stage three is really very wide legs, very high tissue. It's like really bumps and I don't know the word, but it's, it's like sacky skin. And then a lymphedema can additionally cure because the body is just so limited at that moment. Absolutely. So walk us through your life after your lipedema diagnosis, you know, your journey to acceptance. Talk to us about that early stage of fashion and then starting your fashion blogging and where you are today. Well, I do everything differently than before. My life before diagnosis is just something very different. I'm a completely different person and in a good way. I'm really proud to have made these changes, even under the influence of lipedema, or maybe right because I'm on the, under this influence. That was and is a great effort, but it is so worthwhile to reflect consciously and to ask yourself, am I really good like this? Can I do better? Can I be more friendly? Can I become a help for others or for even myself? Can I be a help for myself when I reflect? What is my potential? And crisis like the diagnosis of a chronic disease like lipedema can always be an opportunity at the same time, just like Corona. A crisis is always an opportunity. You can fail or just go with it and see where it takes you. And you are confronted with challenges that you would not otherwise have to overcome and grow with them all the more. And for example, my taste in fashion, I didn't have anyone. I didn't have any taste. I didn't care uh, to say the least. Now I'm an inspiration and I can't believe that. (laughs) Somehow it came with it. So why not? I sometimes, yeah, I just can't quite believe it. I'm just wearing clothes, right? It's just, I don't know. It's good to know that I can be of any help with that just wearing clothes. My biggest personal development was the self-acceptance of my body. With a lot of weight loss and weight gain, my breasts started sagging. 
And I developed a huge complex out of them, a huge complex, really like don't show anything. Every guy must watch my sucking breasts in the gym or at the, like this, I'm not the center of the earth. Nobody cares about my breasts <laughs> and if they, whether they are sucking or not, nobody cared. And I thought that wasn't, I couldn't be sexy with this. And after years, after years, I really just accepted that there are men that liked that look. They like it. They don't need to stay up like the young Venus. It's just, yeah, it's okay. It's fine. They are breasts. I take breasts. <laughs> I choose Hallelujah. breasts. That's the only thing. Yeah, that's the only thing that it's matter for men. Breasts. <laughs> <laughs> And my friend, who is a photographer, helped me with some beautiful lingerie shoots to see myself from a different perspective and to see how central I am. And no matter what my breast looks like, nobody looks at them and they just look at my face. I really, I saw these pictures and I was astonished, astonished that I was this person in the picture because it looked in the picture like I wasn't care. I wasn't caring. And I had to learn from myself out of these pictures how people see myself also. And yeah, exactly. This knowledge can be adapted to anything. Legs, buttocks, nose, hair, obesity. Life is too short to be at war with yourself. Just take it. You are like, you, like that. You're looking fine. Everything is fine. Nothing is bad as it is. And I also noticed that most of the problems women with lipedema have do healthy women also have. There is no difference between that. They are unsure about their legs, but healthy women do the same. Just, yeah, well, the pain is the hard part on that. No, there are nearly no women just accepting themselves as they are. But I think we can learn that from children because they never ask if it's all right how they are. They just be, they just are. And I think we can learn from this light-headed living. They are often the same complexes, the same uncertainties uh, with healthy and ill women. So it helps a lot to understand that and maybe in the, in the end, not to feel alone with it. You are not alone with your complexes, but you don't need to continue living with them. Well, and it's, it's always, there's always room for improvement and that makes life worth living. This episode is proudly brought to you by Venus Concept Australia. Venus is a medical technology company and the creator of Venus Fever, which is a highly customizable skin resurfacing device that delivers exceptional results with low downtime. It's powered by nanofractional radio frequency and it has what's called smart scan technology. You see, it's a fractional radio frequency system that allows the operator control of ablation coagulation and resurfacing for enhanced efficacy in resolving mild to severe skin damage. Venus can replace all other skin resurfacing devices with one lightweight tabletop device and the great thing is is that these treatments are safe for all skin types and it has low downtime. So if you are a practitioner and you're looking to include one of these types of treatments as a service offering, you can actually book a consultation or a demo by completing the form. The link is in the show notes here and just click submit. Then a representative will contact you and they'll provide you everything you need. If you're on the other side and you're looking to have a venous fever treatment, then just jump onto their website, link in the bio, and they have a list of all the clinics with the procedures as well. So you'll be able to find someone close to you. Well, often the person that you're hurting the most is yourself. Exactly. And other people's opinions don't need to be true. My mother taught me a lot of things, ugly things. I never overthought whether they are right or wrong. And exactly some years before, I thought, no, my forehead is fine. My nose is not too big. My shoulders are not too wide. Everything is fine. Why should someone say this and make the person in front of you so unsure about it themselves? Please, every mother, every father who is hearing this, don't tell your children that anything is wrong on them. It's Everything is perfect. And be, be sure about what you tell your children because they will remember their whole life. And I see that often and it always makes me sad because you never get loose these thoughts out of your head. It's poison. 
It's so true because as children, we look at our parents as authorities, as anything that they say is fact. Absolutely. They know everything and everything is fact. <laughs> yeah. Until we turn about 20 and then we realize that they don't know what they're they doing either. People. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They are only people. <laughs> it's like with teachers and parents, you wake up and tell and see, you can tell, okay, they're drinking alcohol. <gasps> They're smoking. They are on parties. They are people. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, it's fine. That's a good thing. Yeah. So how has lipedema affected your career path? Well, it changed everything. Well, today I'm a lipedema fashion blogger and podcaster and speaker and compression model and whatever. And I wouldn't be any of that without lipedema. I even got my current job in marketing at a healthcare company throughout the network. So I love what I do and the great feedback from the community continues to cheer me on. And that's also this thing from the beginning, go with it. If you can change anything in this world, just do it. Do work that changes the world somehow in a bit, just small steps, but I could be an impulse for the lymphatic network in Germany. And that's really something so honoring. What would never have happened without lipedema. As painful as it is, it was a game changer. That's fantastic. Can I ask about the lipedema community over there? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. You mentioned they were rising up. What kinds of things are you all doing? Yeah, they are yeah, they're fighting for the rights to uh, be treated well in the aspect that health insurances pay the liposuctions. Many of these women hope and think that the liposuctions changed their lives. Sometimes, and often it does, but I'm always in the front telling, not forever. You don't know how long. You always have to proceed with the therapy. Always keep it in focus. Don't lose this focus on, on self-management. And they talked with the health minister about it and they really changed something with him that women in stage three get the liposuction paid from the health insurance under unfair conditions because the body mass index it's also called in australia bmi right yeah they have to be under a certain number of the bmi to be treated in, with a liposuction but the most in stage three don't have this bmi anymore because, right, you're you are gaining weight, you are not able to move as good as before. So the most people are over this BMI number and can't be treated. So, yeah, it's a faulty win. But I hope in the next years there will be more victories in this fight. Yeah, um, lipedema women in Germany are very loud in telling that they're suffering. It can be good, it can be hard, but it's, yeah, they're right. And it's good because it changes things. Yes, the voice is important. It really is to have a voice. Yeah, we are trying to hold together, but it's hard to connect people that always think they are the hardest suffering in the room, right? Everybody feels pain. And it, often they, when they get asked from a doctor, uh, how hard is their pain on a scale from one to 10? It's every day eight, <laughs> every day nine. It's like, it's hard and suffering, but women with lipedema over dramatizing things sometimes. But yes. you have to believe what they say because they're the only one who feel, who feel the pain. That's right. It's hard because pain is so subjective. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there are good days, there are bad days. And when you have a bad day and real bad day and you and this pain is constantly there, it's like uh, headaches, like really, really hard headaches with feeling unwell from the stomach and such. Yeah, it's like this. You can't do anything. It's just there and you're losing your mind on it. Your life is very busy now. How do you manage mm -hmm. that on those days? Do you have an employer that is very accommodating? Yeah, I shorted my week on a four-day basis. And every Friday, I use my time to work for myself. And well, that doesn't, that's not enough for sure. And sometimes I work really until night. 
because I can't do otherwise. I really, uh, I took a nap uh, before uh, because I worked till 1 a.m. last day and it's Wednesday at the moment. So if I'm in the flow and I want to get things done, I need to do it. And I'm sadly one of these those people who are always thinking on the next project, on the next project. And I have immense projects on my hand and yeah, I have one, <laughs> one coming up and I can't stop working and it's, I'm so with all my passion in, into it and all my heart and it, it keeps me going. So weekends, uh, Fridays and after the work and I manage it in doing it. And really while Corona, we had a lockdown here, like how many months was it? Like two months, I think, two or three months. And I had the first free time in about four years. Because sometimes I, uh, well, normally I really visit a lot of events, lymphatic events, and work there as a speaker. And those events occur on weekends. So my weekend when I drive somewhere is also, well, gone with one event a day. And yeah, I first felt free time after four years. And yeah, it made me think. And here I am again, sitting at 1 a.m. So not learning at all. <laughs> but as long as I'm having this passion, I have to keep going because I have to put everything out there before I'm sad not doing it. And it's your legacy when you find yes. something that you're so passionate about, even though it's come from a difficult time in your life, it is your legacy and it's your input into the world, which it is a beautiful thing to have. I think so. It's, it's so um, flattering to have a voice that's wanted to be heard and I'm being in help by accident. I didn't knew I would be able to do this. You don't wake up one day and say, wow, I'm a speaker. Hear me, people. <laughs> and and also model, I you don't wake up and think, fashion, I'm looking good. Photograph me. <laughs> Shoot me. <laughs> do it. I'm uh, fabulous. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm fabulous. I'm looking good. Some women really do. They ask me, if they can, if I can speak to the enterprise I'm working with, with the company I'm working with, if they can be also a model in the next campaign. And I look at the picture and they think, well, you have some self-esteem. <laughs> it's like, it really, it's nice to see that some women really, yeah, just feel free with it. And it's good. I'm the one always doubting on myself, like for the first photo, uh, photo shoot. It's hard because in Germany, a photo shoot really just is shooting. I was asked for the first photo shoot whether I want to be a part of it. And I thought, oh, nice. I can write an article about it. I can be backstage. I can see what it's looking like to do this. And I get the call sheet and I was one of the models. <laughs> and I was like, you must be kidding me. How, how I can't model. I never had done it. And that's a production that's really worth some 10,000 of euros. How can you dare? putting me as a model into I don't know if I can do this and I was super nervous and there was a professional model next to me and I was like what if I look like a derp <laughs> well it went fine and <laughs> they they are booking me all over again and again and again it's okay I'm fine with that but yeah that was exciting so funny things happened to me uh, since this yeah is it's interesting because our self-acceptance is so important but sometimes it's the external acceptance and the external encouragement, such as that agency saying, Carolyn would be fantastic. And you don't even know it yet, but they know you're going to be fantastic. But that external influence can help to, I guess, launch you into that journey of realizing that you are capable. It's exactly that. This company always saw something in me that I didn't saw until then they told me would you like to be a speaker would you like to uh, model in our campaign do this do that and it's always like yeah okay <laughs> just do it just go with it um and uh yeah get out of your comfort zone and expand your horizon and that's really that's exciting but yeah you have to believe others um when they say i think you could do this and just get over your self-doubt and just do it try and grow with it my first job as a speaker when didn't went well 
<laughs> but who, yeah, who cares? Uh, they went with it and I had some nice feedback too. So yeah, it's okay. And next time you do it better. Next time you do it better. And today I'm really feeling comfortable in it and get laughs. And it's good to know that I don't need a marketing because it's right of mouth that I'm good. So a good feeling. I worked on this. Yeah, fantastic. You were the co-host of the first or only Lipedema podcast in Germany with over 100 episodes. How did that start? Well, my co-presenter, Natalie Stark, that's, a, that's an easier name than mine. <laughs> Stark. It's called in English, Strong. Natalie Stark founded the podcast under the name Mind Body Life and conducted interviews with exciting personalities from the network as a concept. And I was one of her first interviewees and we hit it in right away and I always wanted to start a Lipedema podcast myself and needed someone to talk to and well Natalie and I are good at chatter and are absolute Lipedema experts of course we had to do the project together so we were born her podcast and gave our baby a new name the Lipedema podcast and uh, since then, we have been providing important information on self-management uh, with lipedema and everything you have to know for a good life with it. And it's in a relaxed and entertaining way. So it's good for the women affected to hear someone talking normally about it, not always suffering. It's cheering up somehow and just giving a good tool at hand. That's fantastic. Now it is in German. So for any of our listeners who speak German, maybe then your native tongue is German, then make sure you check it out. The link will also be in the show notes as well. And for are anyone, there a lot of German, are there a lot of German in Australia? Well, Australia is very multicultural. So we have a, a wide variety of people from all over. Yes. That's cool. Yeah. So I'd just like to also speak about the fashion and you mm -hmm. started as a fashion blogger. Lots of people might not think, as you described, that lipedema goes hand in hand with really nice fashion choices and that clothes choices can be limited, but you proved that wrong. What are your top lipedema, I guess, go-to clothing items? The stores will be different between here and right. Australia, obviously. But what is some advice for dressing for lipedema? Well, I love kimono cardigans. It's the perfect item for wider lipedema arms. And also for me, I don't have much uh, upper arms because I'm, I had these surgeries, but it's very nice, a very nice feeling over the compression. And they just offer enough space and flatter around your body and just gives a good silhouette. And um, then I almost only wear pants from a German fashion label for women with lipedema, uh, which luckily sends them all over the world. So uh, we can certainly link that into the show notes if someone needs exactly these items. They are really just made for from lipedema girls for lipedema girls. Fantastic. Um, and the most and the most important tip is to buy a few accessories in the color of your compression if you wear compression if not just wear accessories in the same color you only need yeah you can combine the basics all together when you have the same earrings in the color of the shoes of the purse of the head something like that you can do anything with accessories and they are much more cheaper than always switch your entire wardrobe in order to match your compression or match a new season and in germany we get if you are doing good with your health insurance uh, you do get two compressions per six months and that's not much if you have to wear them every day but we are lucky in germany getting any from the health insurance i think the situation all over the world is really dramatic, I think. I can't imagine being without them. It really makes the pain go better at this uh, time you're wearing it. So if you can get compression, yeah, just do the fashion way and uh, combine it with accessories in the same color. That's great advice. Thank you. <laughs> and, and there are, I have seen some 
different compression companies as well, bringing out compression in all different colors, which is- Yeah, wonderful. right. It's a whole palette of colors, of patterns. The company I wear, it's, it's Medi. I can choose from um, three different motifs of Swarovski crystals on it. So wow. it's really something special and they are trying to make it as comfortable for you to wear, uh, for the eye to wear as possible. That's good. And hopefully with more time and more awareness, there will be more- fashion labels that are providing clothing for women with lipedema. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Really yeah. good. Carolyn, are you able to share some advice for someone that might be living with lipedema and who might be listening? Yes, I would say, please do not panic after the diagnosis. Lipedema is not the end of the world, but perhaps the beginning of a new chapter that helped me through it. And maintain your weight, stop dieting. Any weight gain carries potential deterioration with it. However, exercise regularly and learn everything you need to know about self-management in order to keep your condition as good as possible. But don't gain and lose weight all your life because that makes things worse. It won't get worse as long as you maintain your weight. And nobody will do the work for you. Nobody can do anything for you except you. You can, you are the only one who can change your life with your hard work. And it's always worth it because it's the only life you have. Seek psychological help if the, the color of your thoughts becomes too dark. And um, it's essential to maintain a positive mindset. Otherwise, the disease has already won. And always remember and keep that in mind. It is your life and you have this only one and deal with it wisely. Fantastic advice. Lots of gold nuggets there. <laughs> I'll be writing some of those down. Thank you. Carolyn, where can people find more about you and the work that you do? Well, after this interview, I have to change everything to English <laughs> because I think of it uh, really like, like a lot of years now. I, I don't want to limit it on language. Use the translation button on Instagram or such under the posts that you can translate. And if you're hearing this podcast, DM me and tell me you heard it and you need it in English. I will switch for you. <laughs> I will translate everything. So you can find me nearly everywhere on Instagram at caroline.sprott or at Mode. It's like Lipidema fashion in German. You find me on Facebook and on the blog Liberty Mode and on Spotify and iTunes if you are fancy learning German. <laughs> so, but it's really as hard as everyone says. <laughs> German isn't, isn't easy, but well, it's always worth a try. There are more difficult languages like Norwegian, Finnish. <laughs> so there you just go. go with it. Learn something new, go out of your comfort zone. Right, and then you can sing with us 99 uh, Red Balloons. <laughs> well thank you so much for spending your evening with us it's early here in australia and quite late there over in germany so i appreciate your time it was great to hear your story and have you on the show thanks what a great conversation i absolutely love speaking with carolyn and what a great personality she's got an awesome sense of humor as well i hope you enjoyed listening as much as i enjoyed recording that so as uh, we've previously mentioned, we are now doing podcast episodes fortnightly for 2021. Uh, not to fret, there is an awesome lineup of guests that we have, always really high quality guests with amazing stories. And for those of you that may have just started listening to the podcast, we've got almost 80 episodes in the bank. So go back and take a listen. They're all uh, recorded in a way that they're evergreen. So the information is still current, it's still relevant. Sometimes we might be talking about the weather, but aside from that, the information is fantastic. So I recommend that you go back through the library, have a look at some of the episodes, and also take a chance. Sometimes you may think that a particular subject isn't going to be of interest of you, but I encourage you just to keep an open mind and learn about all the incredible people that we've been able to interview on this podcast. Until next time, be skin-powered.